Hello, everyone, and welcome. I hope everyone had a lovely vacation. Uh, it's the beginning of the academic year, and we will start with Unit 1 for Individuals and Societies. To begin with, I would like to illustrate and highlight the title. And moving on, I shall discuss the key concepts, related concepts, and global context of the unit which leads to the building up of the statement of inquiry, which is our primary focus of the unit. And more, I will discuss later on the assessment and what is expected of you in this unit. First of all, the title of the unit is how are some societies governed? So based on the title, we can deduce that we will discuss diverse systems. And in addition to that, we will highlight the advantages and disadvantages of each and every system of governance, which is evident in your book, Unit uh, it's, uh, Unit uh, 1, MYP Year 3, Individual and Societies by Concept Year 3. Key concepts, related concept and global context include the following. The key concept of the unit is systems. So we were discussed different systems throughout the unit. Related concept includes power, the power the system imposes upon the individuals in a particular society. Global context, fairness and development and, and the exploration would be power and privilege. So as you can see, they're all interrelated with one another. Uh, if you look at systems, obviously this, there is a form of uh, power and with power, is there fairness and development throughout um, the society itself? Does it impose on or affect the individuals themselves or not? The power and priv privilege evident within a society, depending on the system itself. Um, we will discuss this in details in regard to previous forms of systems, such as the feudal system. This will be discussed later on throughout the unit. And if we add up the key concept, related concept and global context, we will create a statement of inquiry. The statement of inquiry aims to question or aims to guide us the purpose throughout the whole unit, which is the governance of societies is organized by different systems that are used to distribute power, affecting fairness and development. In other words, when you look at the statement of inquiry, you can deduce that the gov the uh, the government imposes a system, and this system has a hierarchy, which imposes the concept of power, and it affects fairness and development. Now, whether you agree or disagree with this statement, this will be reflected on the assessment itself. So you do not necessarily need to agree with the statement of inquiry or the topic itself, whether their it, power does affect fairness and development. However, this should be clearly reflected in your report, which leads me to the factual, conceptual, and debatable questions. The factual includes what is a monarchy. You will define the term monarchy. You'll find me using um, command terms throughout the unit so that you are, you, you are common with them when it comes to criterion A and D, which will be assessed in the next unit. But I do not want you to be uh, shocked with the terms or unfamiliar with them. What is the monarchy like in Japan and the UK? So this clearly indicates that we will discuss Japan and UK. How does democracy work? How have modern democracies developed throughout time, history of democracy? How did it all start? We will reflect upon the systems of governance in general, uh, how it started. Were they mostly a monarchy from the beginning? Then they changed perhaps to a constitutional monarchy. Um, then they established a democracy, etc. cetera. Uh, conceptual, what are the features of totalitarian states? Why do some nations change their form of governance? It will be a question that should be reflected in details. Um, the conceptual includes your understanding of the context in itself and where you can elaborate a little bit more. So if you look at the factual questions, they're more like defining the terms or it is more of the what. What is this? What is democracy? How does it work? How have, have, how have modern democracies developed? 
it's more of factual, which are evident directly from the book, but conceptual allows you to think a little bit in depth and understand the system of governance in order to reflect your point of view in, to some extent. Is monarchy a fair system of governance? A debatable question, which can be also rephrased in the sense, to what extent is monarchy a fair system of governance? You may agree that monarchy is or is not, and this will be a debatable uh, session that we will have throughout the unit, where you will reflect after, after unknowing and understanding the unit uh, upon this debatable question. You might agree or disagree. At the end of the day, INS teaches you to be open-minded in the sense that you you have to accept different perspectives and ideas throughout uh, the unit or any form of debate. Now, when you look at the unit itself and when you look at the SOI, the statement of inquiry is very essential that you need to understand it in depth. A lot of students tend to ignore the statement of inquiry. I advise you not to, because the statement of inquiry guides you to what your assessment will be. And since we're discussing about different uh, forms of governance and whether they're effective and if they affect the fairness and development uh, of a specific uh, place and space, then it is expected that you will create a report reflecting on that statement of inquiry and you will investigate it perhaps on the um, the topics discussed in class or the countries discussed, or you can you can create your own investigation about perhaps Jordan or any other country, depending on the summative assessment and its requirements. Uh, to begin with, the first criterion that you'll be assessed on is be investigating. In investigating, it is divided into four strands. This is based on the guide which you can find online on MYP Individual and Society's guide. And it illustrates how, what is required from you in each and every strand briefly. You will find a detailed TSR um, published on the unit page. Uh, you'll find an image uh, called Drubric. You click on it and you can download the TSR, which is in details. It tells you how to score a seven to eight precisely. However, I will discuss the strands briefly, reflecting on the um, criterion itself. For now, the first strand indicates that you will formulate or create a clear and focused research question, and you will explain its relevance, obviously in relation to the statement of inquiry. So you will create a research question, and you'll have to answer this research question throughout the report itself and reflecting the SOI. So when I say SOI, I expect that you include the terminologies that are required, such as systems, power, uh, fairness, and development. Uh, the second strand includes to formulate and follow an action plan to investigate a research question. You tend to do this, but this shows me a little bit more of your organization throughout your report. Um, all of you are going to start by researching on the internet, then you're going to de develop your research question, provide an introduction, a, bu a body paragraph, and a conclusion reflecting the research question and answering it. So this somewhat shows me how you how you were able to reach your final goal, which is answering your own research question. The third strand includes used methods to collect and record relevant information. You'll use the internet. In addition to the internet, uh, by year three, um, I want you to also use at least one book and try to cite it through in-text citation. In terms of citation, I'm aware that some of you are not familiar uh, in terms of how to cite a text from a book. And we will have a complete session explaining how you can in-text cite. The final strand in criterion B includes the following, evaluate the process and results of the investigation with guidance. Um, I will give you guided questions here in order for you to reflect on your investigation. However, it depends on how you answer them. So if you answer them with only one line or two lines, barely elaborating and explaining, this will not lead you to a seven to eight in the strand. You'll probably get less. So the more details that you reflect on, the higher the grade in this strand. The second strand includes criterion. Uh, the second criteria includes criterion C, communicating, and you will be assessed on the following strand. Again, this is very brief. 
please refer to the rubric evident on your unit page. The first strand uh, includes the following. You must communicate information and ideas in a way that is appropriate for the audience and purpose. You will be able, you have to create a, pre, a PowerPoint presentation reflecting your report. And in terms of the slides and the division of slides, I'll give you a detailed synopsis of what I expect from you in each and every slide. And when you create the PowerPoint presentation, this, is, this highlights your tone is appropriate. Um, the audience are engaged throughout your entire uh, PowerPoint presentation. And um, not, only is, uh, not only is your tone effective and uh, engaging, it also should reflect your report directly. The second strand, structure information and ideas according to the task instructions. So again, you'll need to structure your PowerPoint presentation. I will guide you throughout how you want to structure it or how you should structure it. Uh, but at the end of the day, you are responsible for the creation process. If you wish to change or move one slide to the next, et cetera, you are allowed to. And we will discuss this when, the, when we start with our formative assessment. Finally, the third strand includes create a reference list and cite source of information. All of you are aware of the process of citation. And uh, because you're going to use websites, you must cite your resource because I should be able to identify from where you got the information from and whether it's relevant or not. And again, in terms of whether a, a resource is credible or not, we will discuss this uh, in a different uh, class setting, and you will probably visit the library and a librarian will explain this further. All in all, I wish you the best of luck. Unit one is really engaging. It might sound a little bit hef heavy. However, when we start with it and we start debating about systems of governance, including perhaps briefly touch upon political systems, then it will be a little bit more entertaining. And criterion B and C, usually includes your perspective and your idea in terms of a system of governance. Again, you are entitled to your own opinion as long as your opinion is persuasive enough to convince the person heeding to your, to your debate or reading your report. All in all, everyone, I wish you the best of luck and I shall see you very soon.